So what we've got here is a, a Next Cube. And Next, of course, is the company that Steve Jobs set up when he left Apple in 85. Um, there weren't that many of these machines created, uh, tens of thousands rather than hundreds of thousands. But one of the people who owned one of these machines was Tim Berners-Lee when he was working at CERN. And it happened to be the machine that he invented the web on. And of course, one thing that we often forget about is when Tim Berners-Lee invented the website, um, he also had to create the first web browser. So what we're going to do now is show the first website on the first browser and give you a little demo of that. OK, let's fire this baby up. That's a beautiful noise right there. While that's firing up, there's just a, there's an interesting book that I've got here just for moments um, such as this, and it's called Inquire Within Upon Everything. And it's the book that actually inspired Tim Berners-Lee to create the World Wide Web in the first place. The predecessor to the World Wide Web was in fact called Inquire. And if we just flick through this and read a few random things out, bustle is not industry, nor is impudence courage. True words. Today man lives in pleasure, wealth and pride. Tomorrow poor of life itself denied. It's very sombre. Coffee was first brought to England in 1641. There you go. So this is a book, um, came out in, this, this copy is from 1862. It was actually owned by a, oops, owned by a lady called Mary Elizabeth Hill. Wild dinner upon everything. Okay, we're firing up now. Let's log in. So the first thing you notice is um, the operating system and the fact that the operating system's got a dock, um, very similar to the docks that you see today. And that's not a coincidence, actually. When Steve Jobs left Apple, he took a few key employees with him, one of whom was the incredible Susan Kerr, who did a lot of the interface design for the Apple Macintosh. She also designed this, this interface. And when Apple bought Next back in the early 90s, one of the main assets they bought was the operating system, and Apple OS X, the OS X operating system, is actually built on top of the, um, the Next Step operating system. Okay, so we're, we're fired up now, and you can see the file viewer. Um, and on that file viewer, there's a, there's a few shortcuts. And there's actually, there's two web browsers on here. There's the World Wide Web um, web browser and the Nexus web browser. When Tim, Tim Berners-Lee first made the web, and first made the first web browser, he called it the World Wide Web, um, renaming it the Nexus browser um, a few versions later, when he obviously realized that the, the web uh, was much more than a, a browser. Okay, I'm just going to minimise that, and just as an interesting aside, in the top left-hand corner here, we've got a little icon that we now associate with maximising windows. If I click that, it actually actually minimises it. But before I do that, I just want to open up the um, the World Wide Web browser. So here we have the World Wide Web browser, and um, it's going to minimise this file viewer now, and just show you um, the info panel. So this particular version, it looks like it's from uh, 91. It's a test version only. It's version one. It's by Tim Berners-Lee, and it's an exercise in global information availability. Exercise spell problem, which, which I love. Not a great spell checker myself. And there's also a little panel here that tells you a little bit about the um, first browser and what to do if you find a bug. Then you should, you should email Tim. Um, and I suspect he got a lot of emails because there's quite a few bugs in it, hence the fact that um, we've actually got another version on this, on this machine. So if I, open up, if I quit this one, now I open up the next version, which is called the Nexus browser. So here we've got the, um, we've got the, the Nexus browser open, and if we have a look at the info panel of this one, just going to minimise the file server. You can see it's version 2.02. Um, it's still an exercise in global information availability. Still, still spelt wrong. It's from this version's from um, 1994, um, and actually a lot of the bugs have been addressed in this. It's not totally bug bug free, but it's actually um, it's, it's pretty stable. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the the first the first website, which I've got on a local server. 
we go to document, open given document address, I'm actually going to load the first website. Close the document inspector, minimize the menu system. So what you're seeing here is the very first website inside the um, Tim Berners-Lee's original browser, which is something not that many people will have seen. I know you're excited, I am. Okay, and the first thing you'll notice is that the, the window itself, the page itself, is separate from, from the browser. It's not enclosed by the browser as, um, as most, in the way that most browsers operate today. Um, now if I just open a couple of links, I'll open up this hypermedia link and this takes me to a page called What is Hypertext? And you'll see that's opened in a new window. You'll also see that the window in focus has got a black strip across the top and the window in sound focus at the back has got a light grey strip. If I open up another window, links, that window comes into focus. The other two windows go out of focus and go light grey. Um, and then within that page, I'll click on another link, there's one here called Database. If I click on data page, Database, that takes you to uh, the, the term called Database um, lower down on that page. So that's operating more or less as we, we would expect. Um, just before we move on, I'll show you another feature of this uh, website and how to, how to navigate it. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about this, uh, this menu um, over here. Um, what you'll notice is actually there's an edit function and it's interesting that Tim Berners-Lee actually envisaged a browser as a browser editor. It was actually, he saw it as a multi-author environment from the very beginning which is, which is interesting. Um, one thing I, sh I think that's also you know, perhaps worth noting is that on the original uh, web browser edit is above find in the menu system but now in this later version, three years later, we find that find is above edit perhaps indicating that originally he saw this more as a tool for editing and creating um, pages and less about actually browsing and finding other people's pages. But as the web progressed, it became more about finding and browsing pages rather than editing. So possibly something interesting to look into there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is show you an alternative way of, of navigating this, this website using the Nexus browser. I'm going to close these windows. I'm actually going to quit, quit the browser so we've got a, a, a fresh start and I'm going to open it again. So now I'm going to open up um, a few more, a few more uh, pages as I did before. So I'm going to open up Piper Media and I'm going to open up Links. Okay, now I'm going to go to Navigate and open up the Navigation Panel. So I've now opened the navigation uh, panel, which has gone black, and you'll see that the um, hypertext terms page has gone, the bar at the top has gone to a mid gray, and there's actually kind of three states to each page. There's, there's the light gray when it's out of focus, there's the black when it's in focus, and there's the mid gray when it's in focus, but you're using the navigation panel. So this navigation panel, it's got um, five buttons on it, home, previous, backup, next, and, and help, and they all seem fairly self-explanatory. Um, and they're all terms that we're reasonably um, familiar with. Um, but if we look at help and actually see what they mean by those, you can see that it perhaps, they perhaps don't behave in the way that we might expect. So the navigation buttons allow you to navigate through the hypertext web as a tree. The backup button takes you back the way you came to the text which you selected to get where you are. Well, that seems to make sense, just goes uh, back through your journey. Um, you can use it repeatedly to retrace your steps back to the first thing you followed. Fine. Using the next button is like using backup and then selecting the next reference after the one you took. For example, if you selected one from a list of references, then using the next button will take you to the next of these. Okay, so that's slightly, slightly confusing. Um, the previous button works in a similar way. Okay, let's just have a click around and, and find out. So home, you would expect, would take us to the World Wide Web Project, the home page. Nothing happens. Um, previous, you would expect to take us to the um, What is Hypertext page. Nothing happens. Backup, you would expect to, to take us maybe also to the um, What is Hypertext page. 
that actually takes us to the World Wide Web page. Well, that's interesting. It's actually gone two pages back. Um, so that gives us an indication of um, how the system's working. And actually, after a lot of trial and error, we discovered that actually this browser, this version of the browser that I've got, actually doesn't recognize the page you're on. So even though it says it's in focus, it's actually the previous page that's in focus. So when it actually goes, when you, when you go back up, it takes you two pages back. And when you press next, it actually takes you to the next link on that page. So to be clear, if I close these windows, if you use backup, it takes you two pages back rather than one page. And if you use next, it takes you to those two pages back and opens the next link on that page. So for example, if I open Hypermedia, and then I open links and then I click next it's going to open up the next link on the home page which is two pages back which is summary if we click next again it's going to open yet the next link nothing happens we click next again and it opens up policy so that was interesting why did nothing happen if we go back to the home page we can see it opened up summary as we expected. When I click next, it didn't open up mailing list, and then it opened up policy. But actually, mailing list is a dead link, nothing happens when I click on it. So that's why the next button didn't work. So, actually, the really interesting thing about this is that you can browse the website in two different ways. Not only can you click around and open any page you want as you would today, you can actually take a document centric or an author centric view of the world, and you can actually click through the website in a linear fashion, opening the links sequentially in the order that they're published on the page, which I think is, is, is fascinating. Um, so that gives you an idea of how, um, how the browsing works. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the, is the edit function. And so the first thing I need to do is to, is to create a page. So I'm going to make a new file, a new page, and here we go. Just going to call that Edit demo. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna edit that page. So I'm just gonna call it edit demonstration. Dear Tim, please back up your files. Okay, so I've, I've created a page there um, called Edit Demonstration. Um, what I'm going to do now is show you how to embed a link in that page. So if I open up the, the People page and highlight Tim Berners-Lee, and then I go to Links, Mark Selection, I've, I've highlighted and marked that selection. Now if I now go to the page I've created and highlight Tim, and link to marked you can see that has now become underlined and now if I double click on that, that link it does indeed take me to the, the Tim Learners Berners-Lee page so let me just power this down It's a very satisfying noise. So by going back to the roots of the web and seeing the original website in the original browser, it tells us everything we need to know about Tim Berners-Lee's and Robert Kyle's original vision. The first browser was a browser editor. Not only could people view websites from that browser, they could also create them. It's only subsequent browsers that have made the distinction between the creators of websites and the consumers of websites. Tim Berners-Lee's and Robert Kyle's original vision was a vision for a truly collaborative space.